Welcome back. South Africa has moved to the next phase of its battle against COVID-19 after resuming vaccinations. The rollout of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine had been temporarily halted following concerns about blood clots. The health department has confirmed an additional 95 vaccination sites. Linda Gale Becker is the co-lead investigator of the Sesonke trial and also director of the Desmond Tutu HIV Center. She joins us now live. Linda, thanks for your time. So how is day one, so to speak, going? Actually, pretty good, considering, you know, the stop meant people had down tools and we had to regather and re-get uh, the systems going again. And so we, we have vaccinated more than 4,000 people today. And many sites said that they were going to start a little bit slowly, a little bit late, uh, but they will be fully ramped up by tomorrow. So hopefully we'll get back to those, you know, more than 10,000 by tomorrow. Yeah, that's fantastic news. So researchers, of course, off the Sasanke trial will have to do intensified screening to establish if someone is at risk of blood clotting. How is that going to work? Well, what we are doing is um, educating as much as possible. So the deal is that people who have had some history of a clotting disorder should let us know. The problem with this very rare uh, clotting risk that has been identified in the States and in Europe does not seem to have a prognostic factor. In other words, it isn't easy to identify who's going to be at risk. So we, the best thing we can do is keep awareness high and make sure that people who develop symptoms that are suggestive of the condition um, report early and seek help early. That That's likely to be the best way to deal with this, this problem going forward. Ah, so you're not going to actually see whether people are at risk of blood clotting before they take the vaccine. That's not something you're looking at. We are asking people just to uh, let us know if they have a disorder or they have their own chronic uh, blood thinning uh, medication. Those people, we will just watch them a little more carefully. But that doesn't seem to be a flag um, in, in the data that we've seen from Europe and from America. So we are taking that precaution. Uh, and asking people to report, but uh, not entirely sure whether that will play out as, as a useful uh, way forward in the future. What we are asking people to do is to be aware of the symptoms and to report early should they develop them. The risk time after vaccination seems to be between day four and day 21 post-vaccination that we want people to be aware. Should they get severe headache or severe unrelenting abdominal pain, it is important that they report to our safety desk. There's a, there's a toll-free number. And there are treatment options to deal with that if it does happen. Indeed. So uh, this is uh, this does have a cousin, if you like, that is known to hematologists and other medical uh, specialists. Uh, we have got those groups on on tap. Uh, they're watching out for it. They've actually already put out some good guidance for the uh, for our health colleagues, um, and it is treatable indeed. There was some concern from health workers, you know, once the vaccination process for Johnson & Johnson was halted. Are you seeing any hesitation now since the resumption? We also were worried that that might happen. Uh, ple pleasingly, uh, it does look like the demand is still very much on. We saw queues today. We've had lots of people calling to find out how they can get their, their vouchers reissued if they've had to go back and reconsent. So it does look like, by and large, people are still very excited about getting vaccinated, and, and we absolutely endorse that. Um, without doubt, the benefit weighs heavily in favor of vaccination. This is a rare disorder, um, and this should not deter people from being vaccinated.